Hello, I'm Lou Ward, and we're going to go through page four of lesson one in my book, Beginning Guitar for the Classroom. Since this is the first lesson, not only in this book, but likely your very first guitar lesson you've ever had, I thought it would be a good idea to let you know where we're going, what you can expect to have accomplished and learned by the end of this book. Well, first of all, you're going to be a significantly better player than you are right now. You're going to be very, very proficient in popular styles. As a matter of fact, the last song you'll be learning in this book is Stairway to Heaven, arguably the most popular rock song of all time. In addition to that, you're going to be learning how to play classical guitar as well as perform in guitar ensembles. That's a huge amount of skill by the end of the school year. I thought knowing that would not only give you the big picture, but inspire you and motivate you and cause you to want to dedicate yourself to learning this instrument. So it all begins on this page where we learn how to play a couple of chords and also begin the music reading process so that you can start reading song charts, such as the one on the next page, as well as learn to read classical guitar and guitar ensemble music, which we'll play in the spring. Okay, so before we jump into this page, let's begin by getting familiar with the anatomy of the guitar and how we produce notes and chords on this instrument. So let's start out by talking about the physics of sound production on the guitar. First of all, understand that when we hear sound, any sound, it's because someone or something has caused vibrations in the air, such as clapping, or because the vocal cords in someone's larynx is vibrating, like mine are doing right now, and the resulting vibration causes sound waves that reach our ears. On a stringed instrument, such as violin, piano, or guitar, it's the vibration of strings, which is a source of sound. The sound we hear is pitch, which is the term used for a specific musical note, such as A, the note I just played. The pitch is determined by how fast or slow the string is vibrating. In technical terms, that means the number of oscillations in a given time, which we call frequency. The faster the vibration, the higher the pitch. The slower the vibration, the lower the pitch. So vibrating strings are the source of sound on a guitar, but how is that sound amplified? Well, on the electric guitar, there are pickups that magnetically converts the vibration of the string into an electric current with the same frequency as a vibrating string. That current is sent through a cord from the guitar into an amplifier which contains a speaker, and the speaker vibrates at the same frequency as the string and amplifies that sound. So let's talk about sound production on a non-electric guitar. This is an acoustic guitar. It's wooden, it has a hollow body, and steel strings, which give it a bright and resonant sound. It's a preferred guitar for popular styles of music such as rock, country, folk. Whether you're strumming, Or whether you're playing finger style. So this is a classical guitar. Like an acoustic, it's also wooden. It has a hollow body, but it has nylon strings, giving it a warmer sound quality. And as its name implies, it's intended for classical guitar music, but it's not uncommon for the classical guitar to be used in other styles as well. Both of these guitars, the classical and the acoustic, don't have pickups or need pickups for its sound to be projected. This, of course, doesn't mean that I wouldn't need to amplify an acoustic or classical guitar if I was performing in a large venue, but inherently the guitar string's vibration is amplified using a different means other than electronics and pickups. So just like 
how the speaker in an amplifier vibrates to the same frequency of the strings of the electric guitar and then amplifies that vibration. The vibration of the strings on an acoustic or classical guitar uses the wood to vibrate. The vibration resonates inside the chamber of the guitar and comes out the sound hole. So the larger the wood surface, which is the top of the guitar, also called the soundboard, the louder the volume. But even more importantly, the type and quality of sound that comes out of the acoustic and classical is mostly the result of the type and quality of the wood it's made with. The pickups in an electric only amplify the actual sound of the steel strings vibrating, which is why most electric players use effects such as reverb and distortion to change the sound. <laughs> But it's the wood on the acoustic and classical that transforms the vibrating strings into a sound that's rich and, and vibrant and natural. Different types of woods produce different qualities of sound, which we'll discuss in a moment. So let's discuss the anatomy of the guitar as it relates to sound production. The guitar has six strings. This is our first string, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. The string's length extends from the nut of the guitar to the bridge. The strings over the headstock, which is this part, doesn't have any effect on the vibration or pitch. The strings are connected to tuning pegs, also called tuners or machine heads, which are used, of course, to tune the guitar strings to a specific pitch by increasing or decreasing the tension of the string. So how does the string's vibration cause the wood to vibrate exactly? Well, from the nut of the guitar, which is this, the strings are raised and extend to the saddle, which is this white piece here. And the saddle sits on the bridge this piece here, which is glued to the top of the guitar, which, as we said, is called the soundboard. This top, along with the back and the sides, make up the body of the guitar. Well, since the strings have direct contact with the saddle, which sits on the bridge, as the strings vibrate, it transmits that vibration to the body of the guitar. Again, the vibrating wood resonates inside the chamber of the guitar and comes out the sound hole with a quality of sound that, unlike the electric guitar, is quite different from the sound of the strings alone. Again, this is because we are not hearing so much the strings by the time the sound comes out of the sound hole, although we do hear that as well, but the sound of the wood as it vibrates. On an acoustic or a classical guitar, the color of sound which in music we call timbre, and that is just simply a, a term that describes the character of the sound, such as dark and rich, or bright or warm. It's, it's mostly based on the type of quality of wood. So a guitar made from very fine spruce, for instance, will have a brighter tone than cedar, which is darker and warmer. So using solid wood and quality wood like I said, such as spruce or cedar, maple, Brazilian rosewood, is going to produce a much more beautiful timbre than an entry-level guitar, which typically uses wood veneer at best, even particle board. Wood veneer is a very thin slice of, of decent wood, but it's glued to a much cheaper wood, and again, even particle board. And of course, the higher quality wood, along with the craftsmanship behind making the guitar itself, is why 
these guitars with using the, the better wood are going to be a lot more expensive than an entry level guitar. Lastly, what will also affect the timbre of the sound is how and where you strike the string. Normally we play in this area right here around the sound hole. But if I play closer to the bridge, I get a much more metallic sound. I can also get a darker, warmer sound by slightly muting the string. Or I can get a bell-like sound by playing harmonics. There's lots of colors to choose from on the guitar. So how do we produce notes on the guitar? Well, when the strings are tuned correctly, they vibrate at a specific frequency, which correlates to a specific pitch, such as E, B, G, D, A, and another much lower E. The faster a string vibrates, the higher the pitch. The slower they vibrate, the lower the pitch. So three primary things affects the frequency of the strings. First, the tension. As already mentioned, we use the tuners to reduce or increase the tension of the string to bring it to a specific pitch. Secondly, the thickness of the string. The thicker the string, the slower it vibrates, and thus the lower the pitch. The thinner the string, the faster it vibrates, resulting in a higher pitch. So the first string is the thinnest string on the guitar, so its pitch is higher than the rest. Each subsequent string gets thicker, producing lower pitches, so that when we get to the sixth string, the thickest, it produces the lowest pitch on the guitar. Okay, the last thing that affects the frequency is the string length. The shorter the string, the faster it vibrates, resulting in a higher pitch. So changing the string length is how we change pitches on the guitar, just like on a violin. We simply shorten the strings with our fingers. Now let me demonstrate. So on top of the neck, this is the neck, is a fingerboard or a fretboard, which contains thin metal bars, which are called frets. Each of these frets divide the string by a precise measurement so that each fret corresponds to a specific pitch. For instance, this is an E when I play the first string open. If I put a finger, my finger on the first fret, and by the way, we don't actually put our fingers on the fret, we put it next to the fret, in between the frets. So if I place a finger here, I shorten the string. Now the string is extending from the saddle to the first fret, not to the nut. So it's slightly shorter, so it's going to vibrate slightly faster, resulting in a slightly higher pitch, which is F. E, F. So if I shorten the string, let's say, to the 12th fret, it's, it extends from here to here. It's half the size of the string, the original string. So the pitch is going to be much higher than the string being opened. It's the same principle on the piano, but instead of frets, there are keys, which are assigned to strings already at different lengths. So going up and down each key on the piano is like going up and down each fret of the guitar. Okay, so you know a little more about the anatomy of the guitar and sound production. We're ready to dive into page four in lesson one and start learning to play the guitar. This will be in the part two 
of a two video lesson. So click on that video and let's dive into page four.